With over 12,000 cards available for players to choose from, the majority of which saw their initial debut in the anime, you might be inclined to believe that every card from the anime has received a physical print. But the truth is, there are still hundreds of cards from the anime that have never transitioned to the TCG or the OCG. It's almost as though they're being kept hidden. Are these cards simply too powerful to introduce to today's metagame? Today, we're uncovering the secrets of Yu-Gi-Oh! When all is said and done, token monsters and the cards that generate them in Yu-Gi-Oh! have historically been one of the most consistently good tools at a player's disposal. There's never really been a time in the game's history that they've been bad, with the only example, albeit a reach, being during the Xyz era where they couldn't actually be used for the new mechanic. But it came as a surprise to me that token monsters were just as prevalent in the anime as they were in the real world game. And that's exactly what we'll be diving into today. I've found 10 token generating cards from the original series. Number 7 will shock you. And this week's episode is in my best interest of trimming down the Waking the Dragons episode because these cards all come from that arc. So, we're killing two birds with one stone. Let's start off with Jurimo, who had two token generating spell cards. I guess you could say he was the token white guy of the group. Boom! Shield Wall, a quick play spell card which special summons four shield tokens in defense position, each being level 1 Earth Rock with 1000 attack and defense, and these tokens cannot be tributed for a tribute summon, and if they are switched to attack position, the token is destroyed. So, this is overall a better scapegoat, dropping the restrictions on summoning for your turn for drawbacks that are completely negligible. And I could have easily seen this being an absolute menace of a card during early Link formats. And his second card was Bronze Knights, plural, a quick play spell card. Discard any number of cards, special summon one Bronze Knight token, who would have thought, which are level 1 Earth Warriors with 500 attack and defense in face-up attack position for each discarded card. Every time a card comes up that dumps your entire hand, I'm immediately inclined to think that Infernities could play it. Can anyone let me know if there is any other deck that might benefit from this? Because I'm drawing a blank, other than the infamous Flash Assailant FTK. This one isn't nearly as good as the previous card because the cost of discarding your entire hand is steep. Yes, I'm fully aware that you're not required to throw everything away, but going neg 2 for a single token sounds like bad Yu-Gi-Oh. Speaking of bad Yu-Gi-Oh, let's look at Weevil Underwood and his Cell Division tokens, which are summoned by the normal spell card Cell Division, which has the following effect. Select one face-up level 3 or lower insect type monster you control. Special summon one Cell Division token that has the same original level, type, attribute, attack, and defense as the selected monster. It's okay, the setup for this card isn't the worst thing to ask for, it does give you immediate access to a Link 2, or if you targeted an Insect Tuner monster, you now have access to a level 6 Synchro monster. I could see it being a fun option in a Goki Pole deck of sorts, but since we've established my distaste for Insect decks, I could take it or leave it. Our next card comes from Joey Wheeler, and it screams Joey card, being that it's only live when you're about to lose the duel. Aqua Armor, a normal trap card. Yikes. Activate only when an opponent's monster declares a direct attack while your life points are 2,000 or less. Negate the attack and special summon one player token, a level 4 Earth Warrior with question mark attack and defense. When that player token is special summoned, have your life points. The attack and defense of the player token are equal to your life points. Let's suspend disbelief and say that your opponent only had one monster to attack with, so for all intents and purposes you ended their battle phase. It's still a bad card. Not only did you have to either hold this card in your hand until you could even think about using it, or set this card on your field in hopes that you were going to be close to losing the duel, I'm not even really sure where I'm going with this, but why? Why would you play this card? Well, let's move away from the why and move into the what with a more conventional token generating card from Yugi. Magical Pigeon, a quick play spell card with the following effect. Return one face up dark magician girl you control to your hand. Special summon two pigeon tokens, level one wind wing beast with zero attack and defense in defense position. During the end phase, destroy all pigeon tokens you control and special summon one dark magician girl from your hand. 
This one is interesting because it just says destroy all pigeon tokens, not that it has to be the two you summon from the card, which technically means you could pop out a link one by using one of the tokens and then destroy the other one during your end phase to resummon your dark magician girl. I'm not entirely sure why you'd do that, but rest assured it is a thing you can do with the card, I guess. And Yugi's second card is just as wacky. Natural Selection, a normal trap card with the following effect. Activate only during your opponent's turn. Destroy one face-up monster your opponent controls and special summon one selection token with the same level, type, attribute, attack, and defense as the destroyed monster. The selection token is destroyed during the end phase. First things first, if this card doesn't target, we're in business, baby. And in any format prior to now, I'd say that this card is good. Get rid of a problematic monster on your opponent's board, give yourself a semi-useless token until your next turn, but in today's format, where it's no longer your turn, but our turn, I'm sure there's something more you could do with that token during your opponent's turn, other than walling up with the stats of the monster you got rid of. I'd say this one has quite a bit of potential in the right deck. And now we've made it to number seven on our list, played by darts. Stay with me because it's a doozy. Ori Kalkos Mirror, a standard ritual spell card which is used to ritual summon Mirror Knight Calling, a level six dark warrior ritual monster with the following effect. When this card is ritual summoned, special summon four Mirror Knight tokens, level one dark warrior with zero attack and defense, then place one shield counter on each, max one. Once per turn, place one shield counter on every Mirror Knight token you control without a shield counter, max one. When a Mirror Knight token with a shield counter battles an opponent's monster, its attack becomes equal to that monster's attack until the end of the damage step. If a Mirror Knight token with a shield counter would be destroyed, remove its shield counter instead. I told you you'd be shocked. Never did I think I'd see a ritual monster spam tokens, nor that if it did, they'd actually be really solid. Whether you build a Protect the Castle type deck around Mirror Knight Calling, or just spam the tokens for an easy Link monster, there's a lot to love about what this card does. One of the villains from Waking the Dragons whose cards that I've wanted to see come to the physical card game since seeing them in the anime is Alistair. Don't ask me why, because his cards weren't the best from the villains of that arc, but I like the aesthetic of them a lot. His first card is Tank Core, a normal trap card which can only be activated by targeting one face-up KC1 Creighton you control. Don't ask me why, because nothing happens with that. Then, you can special summon three tank tokens, level three earth machines with 800 attack and 1200 defense in defense position. Like I said, his cards weren't the best, but surprising your opponent with three tokens on top of a monster who benefits from said tokens being on the field is nothing to scoff at. But his second token card is a bit better for today's metagame. Toy Robot Box, a quick play spell card with the following effect. Discard one card. Special summon three robot tokens, level one, wind, machines, with zero attack and defense. These tokens cannot declare an attack. While you control a robot token, your opponent cannot select another monster you control as an attack target except robot token. I really like the additional effects that the anime gives these token monsters, even if it's coming from their generating card, because we have very few examples of that in the physical game outside of just restrictions that are placed on you for using those generating cards. With how powerful cards like Scapegoat were from their debut, and how players were able to figure out what the most effective uses of the card could be, I still wonder how format warping a card like this could have been if we had access to it in a physical game. In my opinion, I've saved the very best of these cards for last, played by none other than my Valentine. Nightmare Tri Mirror, a normal trap card that is honestly fitting for the actual nightmare it imposes on your opponent. Activate only when your opponent summons a monster except by normal summon this turn. Special summon a copy token of a monster you control for each monster your opponent summoned. The attack, defense, level, type, and attribute of the copy token is treated as the same as the original monster. Copy token cannot attack this turn. And they say the perfect combo with Nibiru doesn't exist. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, Exhibit A. It's a shame that tokens can't be used with Xyz monsters because this would be insane. But that's going to wrap up this week's episode of The Secrets of Yu-Gi-Oh! Guys, let me know your thoughts. Is there a series of monsters or cards that you want to see covered in this series? Drop a comment down below, let me know. If you liked the video, don't forget to drop a big thumbs up. It's greatly appreciated, as always guys. And until next time, this has been Purple Pineapple TV, signing off.